Watch what's approaching, the supreme moment. Reality striking, closer than it seems, don't it? Go ahead, it's for the taking if you want it. If not, the dream dies and you'll be forever haunted. Then confront it. What's well, good? Now that Dokkan Battle has officially released enough units within the Great Saiyaman category, let's see how a team consistent of only units that share that name do on a couple of stages on Boss Rush and see how the overall performance is. So we'll go through one by one and uh, we'll talk about their skill sets individually. So for the leader, it's going to be the new Super Strength type Great Saiyaman um, or S Super Saiyan. And uh, leader skill is Hybrid Saiyan's category key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense increase 120%. You'll notice that the uh, LR Great Saiyaman 1 and 2 are also on this team. Technically, they are not on Hybrid Saiyans, but the secondary friend lead is, a, is the Transforming Trunk, so they at least do get some sort of boost, and more or less, the LR Great Saiyamans are pretty much a, a supporting role anyhow for this team setup, so just keep in note that uh, there is a little bit of a discrepancy there. Now, for the super attack for the uh, strength type Great Saiyaman, uh, you're looking at Raises attack, so obviously can stack attack based on the Kaioken mechanic, causes supreme damage to the enemy, and also greatly lowers defense. For the passive skill, attack and defense increase of 120%, as well as a high chance of sealing the attacked enemy super attack for two turns. And also, super type Majin Buu Saga category allies get a key plus two attack and defense increase of 30% boost. Now moving on to the next one will be the super physical type uh, Super Saiyan 2 Great Saiyaman. So this guy actually is a pretty good linking buddy for the Super Saiyan Great Saiyaman. So they actually do link up quite well and this guy definitely does have potential. He's always had uh, pretty good potential to do pretty decent overall in terms of you know overall attack and defense output but uh, with the new strength great Saiyaman definitely definitely much better setup so this guy is pretty much uh, super attack calls a supreme damage enemy and uh, raises attack for three turns for the passive skill it's an attack increase of 90 percent at the start of the turn so again uh, great linking buddy you're looking at several links shared so like uh, golden warrior super saiyan um, kamehameha uh, hero of justice and uh, looks like I uh, think that's about it for that one, but regardless, a uh, pretty good set of link skills between the two units. Now the next one is going to be the free-to-play Team Gohan unit. Of course, this guy will transform instantly as, as the battle starts whenever he is on rotation pretty much, but uh, so basically you're not going to see any sort of impact with the Team Gohan state, but once the transformation takes place, this is actually pretty interesting because uh, the super attack ability is pretty nice. Causes supreme damage to enemy and lowers attack and defense. So it's always good to have super attack abilities where you are able to lower attack and defense. Uh, definitely pretty helpful in you know tougher battle settings. Now for the passive skill, there's a lot of information packed in, so let's go through it. Uh, looks like attack and defense increase of 100%, and then key plus 5, plus an additional attack and defense increase of 58%. Chance of performing a critical hit increases by 10%, and chance of evading enemies' attack, including super attack, plus 10% when attacking extreme type enemies. Uh, however, a character super attack will be sealed when there's a Peppy Gals or Youth category enemy. So, interesting, uh, kind of signifies, uh, personifies the uh, the character quite a bit, where uh, just has to hold back against you know Peppy Gals and and Youth type enemies. So, I, I thought that was pretty uh, fitting for the character itself. Uh, let's see, moving on to let's see the this is also another free to play unit, the Kid Trunks Great Saiyaman unit. Uh, this guy's also pretty good. Raises defense, so obviously for events like Legendary Goku Battle, you were able to stack up that defense and pretty much minimize damage toward the latter part of the battle. Uh, passive skill is also pretty interesting. Attack and defense increase seventy percent, plus an additional attack increase of seven percent up to seventy percent and chance of performing a critical hit plus 7% up to 49% with each attack performed, launches an additional attack with three or more key spheres obtained, and launches an another additional attack with five or more key spheres obtained, and also recovers with HP with candy. So the interesting part about this unit is if you get up to five or more key spheres, you're looking at uh, quickly building up the attack and critical hit uh, percentage because with every attack performed, uh, his his attack and crits uh, percentages do increase. So along with that, you do have the ability to raise defense with every super attack. So 
Of course, uh, I think for this unit, you definitely do want to give probably a little bit heavier levels toward additional tech. I think a 1412 distribution should be fine with that. Uh, moving on to the Gray Simon 3. So this one, uh, you'll you'll understand uh, my commentary here in a second when we cover the passive, but uh, super attack causes immense damage to enemy and raises super type allies attack by 25% for one turn. The passive skill is an attack and defense increases 17% and chance of performing critical hit plus 3% per time traveler's category ally on the team. Defense minus 30% within the same term after receiving attack counters with tremendous power upon receiving normal attack. So uh, in this team build setup, this guy really isn't uh, you know, shown uh, at to, to the full potential because again, the passive skill is set where you do have, you know, depending on how many time traveler category allies you have on the team, the guy is being, the guy will be able to be maximized. So in this case, there are very few uh, time traveler units on the on the team setup, so that's why I'm saying you're not really going to see this guy's maximized potential. Now, lastly, again, the LR LR Gray Simon One and Two, they're not technically on the hybrid sand category again, but the friend lead is a transforming trunk, so at least he does provide 120% toward the uh, super type um, allies on the team. However, this unit is still very good and obviously fits in the criteria for the Great Simon because. Again, the uh, super tag abilities and passive skills are pretty nice. Uh, uh, it is also a free to play unit and uh, can, can certainly be quite helpful in certain settings. So again, with the super tag, causes uh, colossal damage to the enemy and seals a super tag. That's the 12 key super. For the 18 key super, causes mega colossal damage to the enemy and raises super type allies attack by 30% for two turns. And then for the passive skill, another you know, supporting type skill set where super type allies get key plus four and defense increase of 50% and then extreme type enemies minus 70%. The reason why they built in probably this level of uh, key boost within the passive where it's, it's up to plus four key is because again, the leader skill is only super type allies, HP attack and defense increase of 100% when team includes all five super types. So again, you're not seeing any key boosting uh, leader skill, you know, skill sets. So again, that's probably where, where they compensated the uh, key boost to make up for that so overall again this isn't really the ideal setup in uh, any of the units listed but you know in, in terms of just having uh, just general fun and and running a team consistent of you know gray Simon units it's it's quite interesting and uh, the fact that Dokkan has released enough units to where you're able to do that is quite uh, quite nice and again each individual unit has unique skill sets to where you know, it, it can certainly complement each other, but again, it's not really in the best case scenario. Um, obviously, you could probably mix and match and, and include certain units on certain team builds instead of building a team consistently of uh, the Gray Simon units. But individually, they're very good, and you could you could probably group certain ones together. Like obviously, the uh, um, free to play units you're seeing on rotation right now, as well as the Strength Gray Simon plus the uh, Super Saiyan 2 Great Simon. Those those guys link up pretty well together as well. So that's pretty much in a nutshell what you're looking at. I think more or less it's just uh, honestly curiosity what it comes down to is, is seeing how these units perform and of course uh, certainly scaled it down a little bit. This is a uh, boss rush uh, 7 so it's not quite to the extent of infinite Dragon Ball history per se but we are talking about you know 120 percent leader skills from both sides again LR great Simon 1 and 2 aren't really getting a boost either because the um, uh, leader for the super strength uh, super Saiyan great Simon is only a hybrid Saiyans category lead which the LR great Simon 1 and 2 are not on so again those are some of the uh, uh, I don't know commentary that uh, is worth noting, but outside of that, this team works just fine. I mean, again, the the LR Great Simon is pretty much used as as a floater in most cases, just providing support to the rest of the team anyway, and you know, dropping down uh, defense where it applies. In this case, it doesn't really apply because you are facing super type enemies for the most part, anyhow. But you get the concept. I uh, personally do really like the Agility uh, Kit Trunks Gray Simon. Uh, very helpful unit. I, I tested him a while back on the Legendary Goku event and the unit did pretty well. No, not to the extent of you know some of the summonable units that stack defense, um, obviously, but uh, for a free-to-play unit, definitely performed quite well and uh, certainly worth the grind. And uh, if you missed out on it, I'm sure the uh, 
the events will will come back around at some point if not use uh, you know memory keys whatever you know so there are, there's always uh, ways to go about it again this two these two guys link up quite well and uh, probably definitely the uh, overall pretty good solid partnership amongst the uh, the team itself So there's a lot of speculation about you know year five coming up uh, within you know the next two weeks or so, but it'll be interesting to see what kind of free-to-play units we'll have involved with that because with every campaign or celebration period, they do tend to introduce uh, at least one or two free-to-play units uh, along with you know the summonable uh, banner units. So it'll be quite interesting. Uh, you know, obviously at this point, a lot of people are saying that. Uh, Gogeta Blue is pretty much confirmed. I think I've been hearing stuff about Vegito Blue possibly, but uh, pretty much centered around Gogeta Blue. Now, if, I don't know. I think I saw something the other day about you know both Gogeta Blue and Vegito Blue being summonable units. I don't, you know maybe I misread it or whatever the case is. But if that actually did come down to that. Yeah, it's going to be a very hyped up period. I think, uh, yeah, easily expect uh, top grossing from uh, both sides, you know, Apple and uh, Google Play. Obviously, you know, those two are very popular characters, so, you know, we'll certainly see that. I guess the only thing to consider is, you know, the, the naming of the two units because, of course, you'd want to run them with some of the other units, so we'll have to see, you know, what the deal is with that, but... Uh, point being, the original point being, uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of free-to-play units come along with that. Of course, uh, the past, you know, I'd say within the last two years, Dokkan has really improved upon uh, the introduction of uh, reliable and functioning free-to-play units. I, I think there's a less reliance on summonable units. I think it's a lot more manageable with, you know, free-to-play units nowadays than it used to be. So it's certainly a good thing, and. Yeah, I mean, some of these units that you see on the team right now, a good bulk of them are also free-to-play units. So the fact that you can pretty much build teams around free-to-play units and still be able to clear certain events, you know, it's it's, uh, it's certainly a good thing. And we'll have to be on the lookout for what uh, Year 5 Celebration brings. But again, this is pretty much the uh, testing of the Great Simon Team Showcase. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. As always, thanks for watching. I guess I'll catch you guys later.